now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about Minute of Angle or MOA. So a lot of customers that come here are new to long range and don't really understand what MOA really is. So let's talk about that and then talk about some ways that you could use it to your advantage when you're hunting. So first and foremost, very simple. If you have a MOA scope or if your scope is four clicks for one inch at 100 yards, um, you have an MOA scope, which is pretty standard. That's what you see most, most of out there. <clears throat> so um, the, the measurement itself is literally one inch, one MOA is one inch at 100 yards. At 200 yards, it's two inches. At 300, it's three inches. At 400, it's four inches. Very simple, all the way out to 1,000 yards and beyond. 1,000 yards, one MOA would be 10 inches. So if you click your scope four clicks, at a thousand yards you would have made a 10 inch difference high low left or right whatever you whatever you dialed there um, very easy measurement to go off of so most scopes being MOA um, I a lot of times I pair these setups with a SIG Kilo range finder that is programmed with the exact ballistics of the bullet speed and everything these, these things are amazing they spit out the drop in MOA or mills if you prefer that but we're talking about MOA here they spit out the drop in MOA and what it says is what you dial so I've had guys be confused when it says you might take a range it says 800 yards and it might say dial to 17 MOA um, I've had people go 17 clicks counter clicks 17 clicks and of course miss big time you simply dial to 17. This scope is a 20 MOA scope or per revolution, so you simply dial to 17. Some of the scopes I do have 10 MOA per revolution, so you dial to 10 and count plus 7. So you dial about one and a half times. Um, very simple, very simple. But just remember that math. One inch at 100, two inches at 200, three inches at 300, four inches at 400, and so on. It's very simple. So, you know, at um, 400 yards, one click, which is a quarter MOA, would be one inch. So if you just went one click, it would make one inch difference at 400 yards. So it's a very, very easy measurement to go off of. If you have a setup like this, you simply take the number, you dial it, whatever it tells you, you dial it and you shoot. Here's the other thing too, is I've always programmed these for a 10 mile an hour wind. So the second number that you see it spit out, let's say it says 800 yards and then it says 17 MOA. The second number might say three MOA. That is your left and right in wind. If you have a full 10 mile an hour wind blowing full value, 10 mile an hour left or right, you would then hold or dial three, three MOA into the wind. If it's five mile an hour, you cut it in half and it would be hold or dial one and a half. Um, if the wind is quartering towards you, then it's half value again. So a 10 mile an hour wind quartering at a 45 would be only worth five miles an hour so again then that would be 1.5 MOA that you dial or hold into the wind so a very very simple basic if you understand that um, it's really all you need to know about MOA and dialing and making those shots count now let's talk about some other things that um, or some other benefits of MOA so one let's just you know common sense let's say you pull up and shoot at um, a thousand yards and you are uh, five inches low, so you're a half MOA low, which is two clicks. So you literally just come up two clicks and you know you just move your sight up five inches and your next one should be dead on. Now here's the cool thing, you can use most of, most of the times these scopes have reticles inside and each one of those lines is worth one MOA. Now you can use those lines to read your shot, so let, you know, put the one line on the bullseye and you'll see how much high or low that you were if it's, you know, just halfway between two lines, then you know you're half MOA. If it's a full, uh, you know, between one and, and two lines, if it reaches from one to the next, you know it's a minute. So it's four clicks. Um, so doing that, you can really quickly, if your scope happened to be off or something and you're hitting a little bit low, you can really quickly come up and sight your scope back in, you know, literally the very next shot, because you can read how much low, high, left, or right that you were and just make the exact amount of adjustments instead of just giving her a couple clicks and hoping you're close. So that's one really cool thing about understanding that, getting your second shot back on target really fast. You can do the same thing if you're just missing something in wind. 
let's say you're shooting 1,200 yards and you missed, you know, two feet left. Well, now you can pull up and read that with your MOA lines and go, hey, I'm 24 inches left, or I'm two MOA left, which automatically tells you that's 24 inches at 1,200 yards. So you can use that for some measurements and things like that. Um, a lot of times when I go out west to hunt, um, I don't typically set up a target and shoot my rifle or nothing like that before I hunt, but what I will do is I'll drive out into some public somewhere and where I'm not hunting, and I'll just pick a rock at a distance, maybe across a canyon or something like that, and the first thing I'll do is I'll pull up and I'll read how big that rock is with my MOA lines. So let's say I'm shooting 800 yards. If that rock is two MOA, I know I'm shooting at a 16-inch rock, and if I'm shooting for the right to center of that rock, I know that I have you know, eight inches out either side, and then I can read my impact. So if I hit, you know, a little bit high, I can read exactly how many inches high I am or how many inches low I am by literally knowing how big that rock is. Or you can read from the point that you shot off of, up or down, oftentimes you can see where your impact was, um, and uh, you know exactly where, exactly where your gun's hitting. And so you're not trying to guess, well, I think that rock is, this big or I think that rock is that big because a lot of times it's if you just guess it you're you're way off um, some, oftentimes they're bigger than you think um, so that's a cool thing about understanding MOA and another way that you can use it to your advantage sometimes you get into scenarios let's say you're on a moose hunt um, <clears throat> and you have some limitations on the size or the width of that moose and let's say you're hunting somewhere where you can only shoot a moose that's 50 inch paddle or wider well, now you understand that you can use your MOA lines to know how to read exactly the width or get really close. So you just range the animal if it's, you know, 500 yards. You know that if that moose is, needs to be 10 MOA wide in order to be legal, that would be uh, 50, 50 inches because it's 5 inches uh, is 1 MOA at 500 yards. So times 10, that's so you just automatically know most of these scopes have that have quite a bit more than that inside, um, and so you can read how wide that uh, that animal is rack is. Um, the other thing, black bears can be really hard to judge. So if you know approximately how big a black bear you want, or you know what's what you consider a trophy-sized black bear, you can read him nose to tail on when he's broadside, and have a really good idea how long that bear actually is. So you can use that as a measurement at almost any distance to measure things out and to get a little better idea. So I hope that helps you with understanding MOA a little bit better and um, I hope you can use it in the field this year and I hope you have a successful season. If there's anything we can do here at Elevation Rifles, get you a good quality package in your hands without breaking the bank, give us a call. We'd love to help you and talk to you.